Hello, I'm Steve, and in this video, I'm going to show you the capabilities of SMC's FRL Configurator and walk through examples of component selection, bill of material download, and CAD model downloads using the Configurator tool. We've worked with our colleagues from SMC Austria to create FRL Configurator content that's appropriate for the U.S. market. This Configurator tool does a lot, but the interface is a bit different compared to the U.S. website, so you'll benefit from spending a few minutes to learn how this tool works. To start with, you can select the country and log in using the same information as your ETEC or SMC USA login information. Once you're logged in, it will show your name at the top, like this. You can start to select the options that you want for an FRL component. Typically, you'd start by selecting the flow rate that you need. If you're not sure what flow rate you need, you might want to take a look at the help section on smcusa.com where you can find eTools. And under eTools, you'll find an airflow consumption calculator that will help you determine this value. After selecting the flow rate, based on what you select, the configurator will adjust the port sizes and the thread options to match the selected size or flow rate. If you select something small like a size 10, then the port size will be limited to M5. If you select a larger size, something like a 30, you'd have RC, G, and NPT ports available. Now we have a blank page and we're ready to start selecting the components that we want. As you would expect, when you select the plus sign, you'll see a broad selection of different components that can be added to our assembly. Don't forget to scroll down. When you do, you'll see that there's other components that can be added as well. If you wanted to add an AMG water separator, we can add that as a component. And when you do, it immediately shows a visual representation of that component. I'll add a few other components. But before we do that, if you look at the bottom of the interface, you'll see some text. It suggests that for an AMG water separator, we need to add a filter before the AMG unit. If we select Solve, it will automatically do that, adding the component and placing it before the AMG unit. It also adds the connector bracket that will be needed in between the components. When the component is selected, it displays in purple. When you select an additional option, such as an indicator or a bracket, which you can select by using these checkboxes on the left, you'll see that it adds that option and it updates visually. For example, if we remove the indicator and then add it back in, it disappears when the checkbox is deselected and reappears when we select the checkbox. The same thing happens with the bracket. The help text may suggest reordering components. For example, if we add a VHS shutoff valve to the end of our assembly, it will suggest reordering this by placing the VHS at the beginning of the assembly so that it will relieve or exhaust air from all of the components. If we select Solve, it will move the VHS to the beginning and reorder all of the components in the assembly. Once you have all of the selected options made for the components, you can select the input and output fittings for the assembly. If we decided that we want 3 8 inch straight fittings for the input, we can select those options. For the output, if we wanted it to be an elbow fitting, but also 3 8 of an inch, we can make those selections. The appropriate fitting part numbers will be added to the bill of materials. While it won't be shown in the assembly user interface as a component, it will be included as part of the CAD file. Moving to the Project Information tab, you can add your phone number and create a quotation if you want to. You can also add a description of the project and any other information that you want or need to add. The final tab is the Bill of Materials tab. As you can see, this lists all of the materials and the quantities as well as their positions for building this unit. You can also preview the CAD file. It takes a few seconds to generate. Once the preview is complete, you can see exactly where all of the components are located and how they will go together. The process for getting the CAD download is just slightly different compared to the US website. You need to preview the CAD file first and then select the format that you want for the download. In this case, I would select SOLIDWORKS for the download and then select the download button. After a few seconds, it will generate the CAD file and on the lower left-hand side of the screen, you can see that the file has been downloaded successfully. From there, we can unzip the CAD file and open that inside of SOLIDWORKS. I'll do that next. As you can see, this is our SOLIDWORKS folder. We can open this file up and sort by file type. That'll put the assembly file at the top. Then we can open this up. 
There's the CAD file that we just downloaded. All right, that's a quick walkthrough of the FRL configurator. We'd appreciate getting your comments and feedback. Just send an email to marketing at smcusa.com and we'd welcome any feedback that you have. Thanks for your time. We appreciate it. And we hope that you'll find this to be a useful tool.